Let's head into this newscast with Vyond's continuous coverage on China's coronavirus outbreak, which is showing no signs of abating. And the latest news coming in is that the death toll has now reached 811, surpassing the fatalities in the SARS outbreak in 2002. Now, the number of confirmed cases has reached a whopping 37,198, with more than 2,600 new cases reported in the last 24 hours itself. The head of the World Health Organization-led international team investigating the coronavirus outbreak will be leaving for China next week. It's really important to make sure that all activities of the response are adequately funded at WHO and key partners. Just to mention the donors so far and to thank them, the United States, the United Kingdom, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Netherlands, the Czech Republic, Japan, and the Wellcome Trust. But the response requires more funding, and we call upon all donors to please step up. I thank you. Meanwhile, France has announced five new cases of the coronavirus. This has taken the total number of those infected in France to 11. Prime Minister Eduardo Philippe called an emergency meeting following the new cases. The five new cases are British citizens who are on a holiday in France. These people were staying in the same ski resort where an infected Singapore national was staying. The U.S. Embassy has also reported the first American casualty in the ongoing outbreak. A 60-year-old woman who was being treated at a hospital in Wuhan passed away earlier. In the meanwhile, Hong Kong's chief executive Carrie Lam has said that the territory is facing an acute shortage of masks and other preventive medical gear. She says that Hong Kong did not have enough masks to keep up the supply for over a month. So, in this place, I want to make a request. I request that if there is a need to buy these masks, I know that the other people can buy them. 用途徑採購一些很少量,一萬兩萬的口罩。我呼籲他們可以捐給社會上有需要的人,亦都有不少機構在做這個工作的。and so Vion has been tracking each and every development of the coronavirus epidemic since day one. And to get the sense of ground zero, we have collaborated with China's CGTN. Our CGTN correspondent Xin Chen Shu is also joining us live from the epicenter of the outbreak, and that is Wuhan. Let's quickly go across to Xin. Xin, a very warm welcome to you. Now, the number of deaths in China have surpassed those of SARS globally. How is the situation on ground zero in Wuhan? So definitely we're still seeing this increasing trend in the number of uh, confirmed cases, suspected cases, as well as uh, the death toll. But we also have to compare the, the data right now, uh, the, the fatality rate of the novel coronavirus right now across China stood around 2%. But during the SARS outbreak, that rate is about 7%. And here, even in Wuhan, Hubei, in central China, the epicenter of the virus break, uh, outbreak, the fatality rate is, is about four, less than 4%, 3.5%. So still, uh, that kind of echoes uh, with the doctors that I've been speaking with, and they are saying that the novel coronavirus is a little bit more effective, uh, can spread a little bit faster, but not as deadly. But still, there are a lot of experts that are saying it is it could be still too early to call um, that uh, the novel coronavirus is not as deadly as SARS. But anyways, here in Wuhan, uh, you know, I'm out here on the streets. I've been seeing more cars on the road, and I've been seeing people, you know, more willing to go on the streets. Of course, fully protected with their masks, with their gloves. Uh, but still, a lot of experts are saying that for people, they are kind of, um, they should not lose their attention. They should still keep reminded that uh, you know, the virus is still out there. They need to protect themselves. They, they prefer, they should probably better rather stay at home instead of going on the streets. You were telling about, uh, us about the, uh, the plea that has been made to the world community by the WHO also in terms of the help that they can, you know, extend to other countries. But how is China at the moment battling this crisis? So definitely, because right now I think the, the most challenging part is about medical supply as well as right. uh, a shortage of medical staff here in Wuhan, the epicenter of the coronavirus. But I've been speaking to doctors and nurses and even volunteers who have been helping distributing, uh, you know, medical supplies to hospitals. They've been seeing in recent days they've seen this pick up in uh, medical supplies. 
but they're also try they're still trying to save as much as possible because they don't know how long this battle against the coronavirus will last. And uh, in addition to that, I mentioned about the shortage of medical staff. Uh, still, uh, you know, Wuhan's doctors are working long hours, uh, but the Chinese government is trying to urging what we so what we call a one province eight one city here in Hubei. That means doctors from one province will come help with one city just here in Hubei province, including those surrounding who uh, surrounding the capital city of Wuhan. You know, Wuhan is still the worst hit city by the virus, but the uh, cities surrounding it are also facing tremendous challenges. Right, Shin. So that was the deal with the with the medical supplies. But how are the medical staff at the moment coping with this adversity, since they are equally susceptible to the infection? Absolutely. But to be honest, they are very upbeat and uh, they've been sharing a lot of positive energies. To be honest, I've been speaking to many of them, and actually yesterday I met this a male nurse at the city's one of the city's 28 designated hospitals for coronavirus. And he has been at the front line since the beginning. And he, in fact, the management wanted him to step down from the, the front line. But he refused because he told me that if he stepped down, it will be his colleagues to fill his vacancy. And he thinks that he can still take it. He can still hang on for a little bit longer. And he's also very positive. He's trying to train himself as well. Because right now, basically all shops like gym, gyms are, are not open uh, at all. But for him, he would use like buckets, water buckets to, to you know, do some weightlifting to really keep himself, himself in check, healthy and fit. Um, and he's just he's not alone. For other nurses and doctors, um, they have to isolate themselves from their families because they have been in close contact with the virus. But still, they are fighting, literally. They are fighting at the front line and they are still hanging on. And right. in addition, about 11,000 doctors from across China have come to Wuhan to help. And that will somewhat leave the burden on right. the local doctors. So clearly the situation remains very tense in Wuhan, which is of course under lockdown. How are people coping with their day-to-day -day life and their needs? So food supplies and daily necessities are still abundant in the city with uh, uh, food delivery services, courier services into the city and supermarkets uh, still open for business. But of course, they are not in full operation. For example, supermarkets, they don't. They, they open at 10 in the morning and close pretty early at 5 in the evening. Um, but still, uh, you know, there are food, there are daily necessities. Um, but for other products, like outside of Wuhan, outside of the province, because of the lockdown, can be a little bit trickier to enter the city. But for agricultural produce, I've been speaking to supermarket managers and uh, and logistics providers. You know, for agricultural produce coming within the province, they have no problem to get a restart, so people can't feed themselves. Right. right. Shin, even though the priority for China is to contain the outbreak, how is the Chinese economy taking the hit? So that's a very interesting uh, question, because um, in addition to the virus outbreak, because during the first quarter, we have this Chinese Spring Festival, and that's usually the time that we're going to see the CPI I mean, a faster inflation because of the seven-day recess of companies and the business, they just, you know, they, they take a rest to celebrate the new year. So on top of the virus outbreak right now, companies are not really fully open yet. And I've seen a lot of companies trying to cope with their business by moving their business online. But that, you know, that will just help for, for certain, uh, to a certain extent. For example, in the service sectors, the hotel that we live, um, you know, where uh, there are still room services, but the restaurants and the bars are not open. And for for local like car dealers here right. in Wuhan, they are not having any business at all. So we we'll definitely see uh, there there might be more impact on the economy. But uh, compared to the SARS outbreak, um, the, the the second quarter or the the third or the fourth quarter, it might pick up after the virus can be handled with. Right, Shin, in terms of control, we know that, you know, two new hospitals are now currently operational. But as far as the remedy is concerned, has there been any new breakthrough in the development of a drug or vaccine so far? So right now we don't still have like one drug or one vaccine that can really deal with this virus. But the good news is one drug that has been used to combat Ebola is now being tested in trial 
Yes, you're right here in Wuhan. And it, the drug, I'm trying to pronounce the name right, Rem, um, Disavir, Remdesivir. And that drug is, has entered a trial, a clinical trial, about a week ago. But the first cycle for the first round of the, uh, uh, of the trial will conclude uh, next week. And we're going to see more results on how that drug will tackle like coronavirus. And in the, in the meantime, Chinese traditional medicine and Chinese alternative medicines are also being used. And some experts are also believe that it will help. And in addition, Chinese medicines can be a little bit more cost efficient because they are more affordable. Right. So let's hope that these vaccines actually make it to the market and prove to be effective. Thank you so much and for giving us all those details from Wuhan. Stay safe, stay healthy. And that was Weon's exclusive partnership with CGTN and uh, Shin bringing us all those details from Wuhan.